Yeah, so I mentioned I mentioned earlier, for example, that I'm following your example and many other Christians' example when it comes to this, right? So, for example, um, I'm assuming you're going to vote for Donald Trump this election, right? Uh, yeah, I, I haven't I haven't decided, but I would have no problem voting for Trump. So Sam ended up having this same conversation with Virgil Walker. Let's listen in to how their conversation uh, went. Ever operate as in, in a functional way as as a pro choicer would advocate. I don't think it's insincerity that's driving yeah. th that's driving that idea. But I think that's a standard that isn't universal, right? So for example, oh, I mentioned obviously. Yeah, so I mentioned I mentioned earlier, for example, that I'm following your example and many other Christians' example when it comes to this, right? So for example, um, I'm assuming you're gonna vote for Donald Trump this election, right? Uh, yeah, I, I haven't I haven't decided, but I would have no problem voting for Trump. Okay, um, but Trump is is uh, so so. For example, well, before I get to my, my question, Trump um, is was the first uh, uh, first uh, president uh, to support LGBT uh, LGBT ideology. Um, he has uh, come out for the last several years now, been going against. He's really just a pro-abortion candidate right now. Um, I mean, he never mind being pro-life or being an incrementalist. He is a pro-abortion candidate, and yeah, you recognize that you're you said you have no problem choosing to vote for him mm -hmm. over Biden because you understand that Biden is worse than than Trump. But yet you wouldn't believe that your support for Donald Trump is teaching people that you really believe that his views are, are should be correct, right? Right. right. Yeah, I, I just I, I think that I think that's a category error uh, to to say that a vote for Trump uh, equals equals is this is equivalent to. I'm not um, saying, I'm a, not saying bill, it's a, a bill a bill that 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 where we know will result in a hundred percent death. Like I could I could if I voted for Trump, for example. There are other aspects of government that I can appeal to to stop Trump from doing whatever he's doing. If I vote for the heartbeat bill, then all of the babies, I mean, those who advocate for the for the uh, uh, the, the the not not immediatism, but but the um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, I was about to say continuationism. <laughs> <laughs> those, those, those who aren't immediatists like like myself, who, who, who want gradual who want a gradual approach. There's no gradual approach. Those babies who don't have the heartbeat die. I just, those are two separate categories. I could fight against Trump in other ways, whereas all of the babies who don't, who, who, who don't have a heartbeat will die. So, so, so that, those are two different. Those are two different yeah. things. But there are abolitionists who rightly understand that that view is inconsistent, <laughs> which is why they, many many abolitionists say they will not vote for Trump for that very reason, I right? See. So he's not an abolitionist. He's not even pro life. Right. He's explicitly said that he's not going to support any bill um, that the uh, the Senate would introduce that would be anti abortion in any capacity. Um, in in Arizona, he he outright after the um, the Supreme. Okay, so in this if, uh, in this case, right. Some say is correct. Virgil is correct saying that is a category error. That's true. But some was trying to get to Virgil, uh, the consistent. Okay. If you're going to be consistent that you're not going to vote for um, unjust laws, right? Unjust bills, right? For these um, heartbeat bills and everything else. When it comes to Donald Trump, why are you giving Donald Trump a pass? Biblical speaking, you cannot give Donald Trump a pass, okay? Because he is, he, one, he's advocating that he's not going to support abolitionists, okay? He's not going, if, if anything, he's pro-choice. So that's not even a secret out there. So why is it okay that you are willing to vote for this guy who is actually pro-choice against your position, and then when it comes to these uh, deleting babies, you, 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 you know, you're consistent. So he caught him there. He's not consistent. And uh, and this is so many people are like this. I was like that myself too. I'm like, no, but think it through, okay? So here's a scripture that I want to share with you guys, okay? Exodus 18, okay? This is Moses uh, choosing leaders, okay? Moreover, look for able men from all people, men who fear God, who are trustworthy and hate a bribe, and place such men over the people as chiefs of thousands or hundreds or fifties and of tens, okay? This is the idea of... Uh, uh, what type of leader should we be looking for? Should we be choosing, right? You want uh, somebody who's who, who who's a character, okay? Who has a good character? Who has a good character? Who's not going to take a bribe? These are just like the bare minimum, okay? And people always bring, oh, we're not voting for a pastor. Like, no, th that's not the idea. You are not voting for a pastor. But anytime you're choosing somebody for a position of leadership, Biblically speaking, you are to choose people who have a good character, 
okay? Nobody's perfect. So that's not even a question over here. So how is it that whenever it comes to this question, like, okay, when it's time to uh, people voting for Trump, it's like, oh, no, I'm going to fight Trump in other areas. Okay, you're going to fight Trump in other areas, but this main thing over here, that's about life. He's not willing to support that. So why are you willing to, to, to vote for him? So the question would just be like, okay, but there's only Biden and Donald Trump. Who should you vote for? Political dissent, guys, still does exist. Okay? Political dissent does exist. You don't have to vote for Trump. You don't have to vote for, for, for Biden. Yes, if everything else goes to hell in a handbasket, so be it. You are being consistent according to the scriptures. Okay? You know, in good conscience, I cannot vote for this person. Because of whatever the scripture teaches. And you're, start, you're being consistent in that regard. But Trump gets a pass, even though right now he's even pro-choice. So people, okay, they don't want to vote for Biden. Why Biden is pro-choice? Well, Trump is also pro-choice. So they cancel each other in that regard, right? And then people are like, oh, you know, but Trump is good economy. He's, he's good or whatever. Okay, if you're voting for them because of those things, then just be honest. You're voting for those things. But don't think for a second that you're being consistent by casting a vote for Donald Trump. You are not, not biblically speaking. And people always say, oh, we don't have, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. We don't have, like, no, it doesn't matter. It is the word of God. There are principles in the scripture, just like we have principles to choose an elder. We have principles to choose a deacon. Okay. You have principles to choose a wife. Okay. Like, okay, you're looking for a wife. There are certain things like, no, if, if, if I'm a man who professes godliness, I need a wife who is like this, who's like this, right? Like you, you shouldn't be unequally yoked. You're just following the, the, the biblical principles. So why all of a sudden we're out here, there are no biblical principles on how to choose leaders? The Bible doesn't speak on that issue? And if it does, how are we applying that issue when it comes to, uh, to Donald Trump? Hello? How are we applying to that issue when it comes to Donald Trump? So we should not pretend like the Bible hasn't spoken on these issues. The Bible has spoken to these issues. It's just a matter of us being inconsistent. Sam is not consistent in his position of incrementalism, partiality, uh, a heartbeat bill. He's not. And even the definition that he had when it comes to partiality on this issue, like it's just like, I'm like, Sam, what are you talking about? Okay. Like, no. But you voted for 15 issue, you have already exercised partiality because you you are not supporting the 10 weeks, the 15 weeks. You're saying with your lips that you support, but your vote says something else. Just like these people, like right? the same the same thing that you brought out to Vigil Walk. He's saying is uh, you know abol abolition is everything else, right? But he has no problem voting for Donald Trump. Well, how are you gonna vote for Donald Trump? given the position that he has, right? The scripture is here, you know, woe to those who decree iniquitous decrees and the writers who keep writing oppression to turn aside the needy from justice and to rob the poor of the people of their right that win, that widows may be, uh, may be their spoil. So no, if Trump is promoting iniquitous decrees, he shouldn't have your vote. He should not have a vote. If he repents, if he changes his spine before come November, fine, go for it. But until then, as it stands right now, no. He's promoting iniquitous decrees. You, you cannot defend that biblically speaking. You cannot defend that biblically speaking, just like incrementalism, right? You cannot defend that biblically speaking. We cannot be doing things just because it works. We cannot doing things because like, oh, we just don't see how these things can ever change, can ever happen. That's God's business. Our business is for us to be faithful and to promote what the scripture teaches. But I'm interested to know what you guys think about this whole thing. Leave me your comments because it is a very, very interesting debate to have. All right. Until next time, remember to be in the now. Thank you.